So a microplastic particle is simply a particle of plastic, of any type of plastic that is less than one millimetre in size. Microplastic comes from two main sources. The first source is industrially produced uh, plastic particles in the micron size. So this is making particles specifically as microplastic particles for use in consumer products. And the other is degradation products of large plastic items. So when they break down or fragment, uh, they break down into microplastic particles. So the degradation process can occur um, in many different places. So it can occur in the environment once a large piece of plastic has been released into the environment. So processes such as UV degradation, so sunlight, uh, mechanical degradation, so friction, uh, abrasion processes can cause plastic to fragment. That can happen in the marine environment, but it can also happen uh, on, in the terrestrial environment. And of course, just when we use plastic items, we can also cause them to degrade just through their natural use as well. So these are all sources of microplastic. So when microplastic particles enter the marine environment, um, their behavior and ultimately their, their fate, where they end up, is influenced by quite a lot of different parameters. So one of the key uh, parameters is what type of plastic you have. So some plastic is buoyant, so that is going to float. Some plastic is dense, so that is going to sink quite quickly. But we also know that, uh, particularly when we get to micron size, so microplastics, there are processes to take buoyant plastic particles down to the sea floor as well. And that's through changes in chemistry. Uh, they can be eaten by organisms, which helps transfer them uh, to the floor, or they can be caught up in other particles or debris that is sinking to the, uh, the sea floor. So all the evidence that we have so far, all the uh, analyses that have been done and the samples that have been taken, um, uh, indicate that most of the microplastic uh, particles are present in the, the marine sediments, so over 90%. This rate of transfer of plastic to the, the seafloor is, um, again, it's dependent on quite a lot of parameters, so the plastic type will affect it, um, but a lot of oceanographic conditions, um, uh, current flows, how high energy uh, that particular part of the marine environment is, um, how much marine snow or other particulates are present which are going to trap the plastic and, and, try and pull it downwards. So um, it's something that would that can be measured in the uh, laboratory, but trying to test all these different conditions is quite hard. So we tend to rely upon modeling techniques. Um, of course, what one thing that we, we can use uh, to, to look back in, uh, in history and give us a kind of um, a timeline on plastic uh, accumulation in the sediments is to take sediment cores and because plastic takes such a long time to degrade in the environment, we're pretty certain that most of the plastic that has entered the environment decades ago is still present there. So you would have this recorded nicely in the, in the cores. Uh, and from that, we can also see how concentrations might have changed over time, so in input concentrations. One of the, the, probably the most effective ways of mitigating this problem of plastic in the environment, and particularly microplastic, because micro, trying to get microplastic out of the marine environment once it's, there, once it's already there is very, very hard. So the, the mitigation strategy should focus on prevention as much as possible. Uh, and one of the goals of uh, the Go Jelly project is to look at the role of mucus produced by jellyfish as uh, a trapping agent uh, that can be developed into a filter for use in um, wastewater treatment plants or industrial discharges to try and trap microplastic. 